I grew up on the stage. Around seven years old, I started performing in musical theater, cast as Wendy's daughter in Peter Pan, who had like three lines, and an orphan named July and Annie, who did get to perform stage combat. In high school, I was a theater kid, but didn't really identify as one because I also played sports. And as we all know from every movie, you cannot be a jock and in the school play. I was cast as Rusty, the best friend in Footloose, and Helene, the best friend in Sweet Charity, also a prostitute. I guess you could say I was always the best friend, never the lead. I loved performing and was saddened that my college didn't have a theater program, so I tried something new and focused on voice performance, studying classical and opera singings to stay on the stage. After I graduated in 2013, it was all work and very little play, none of it theater. I lived with my best friend from college and I noticed she found a great work-life balance when she started taking improv classes in San Francisco while I had no life outside of work. I went to her shows, which inspired me to take improv classes on my own, reigniting the spark I have when performing. It was around this time that my friend Sam and I were out to dinner. She mentioned a show she was directing in three weeks and she had just had an actor drop out. She asked, would you be interested in the role? Inside, I was freaking out, and I, I was so excited about performing, but I casually offered a like, I mean, I, maybe, yeah, I mean, I, I guess if you need somebody. <laughs> a few days later, I became a last minute addition to the cast of Pint Size Plays going up at Piano Fight. Because of my yes and attitude, I was cast as the lead in a three act play called Love Through the Ages. I portrayed three women falling in love throughout time. Juliet with her love Romeo, Helen of Troy and her love Paris, and Scarlett O'Hara and her love Rhett. I loved every minute of rehearsals, gathering of costumes, coordinating schedules, even the rush hour traffic from the East Bay to San Francisco. That's how much I loved it. I missed being on the stage. Piano Fight was the place I got to pretend to fall in love, but also where I had a bit of my own real life love story. What follows is my romantic journey <laughs> in three acts about three men whose names have been changed to protect their identities <laughs> and shortcomings. <laughs> Act one, Joe thinks he's a big deal. <laughs> Joe was in an improv class with my best friend. I saw Joe on stage several times doing fantastic pantomime, or as improvisers call it, space object work. <laughs> and I thought, wow, he's so confident. <laughs> Joe was full of himself flirtatious, and basically made me feel like I had to go out with him, like I'd be missing out if I didn't. <laughs> oh my gosh. Joe and I did go out on three dates. On our third date, we made dinner together in my apartment. Joe went on and on about his, the bits and jokes going on in his head, something about robots that he thought was hilarious. He left no room for me in the conversation to get a word in, but he was taking the lead tonight. I was enamored with his carefree and confident attitude. Eventually, things started to get hot and heavy, and I decided that this was gonna be like a high school above the belt kind of night, and I told him that my pants were staying on. Even though I could tell he obviously didn't like this, he seemed to comply. As he was leaving, we were making out by the door, and then something clearly short-circuited in his brain because he pantsed me. <laughs> yep, you heard me. A 30-year-old man pantsed me in my apartment. <laughs> it was incredibly bizarre, to say the least, and even after I explained to him why that wasn't okay, he never <laughs> quite 
understood why I never talked to him again after that night. <laughs> a few weeks later, a friend was performing at Piano Fight, and I walked in, and I looked up at the bar and saw Joe bartending. My stomach dropped just like my pants had, <laughs> unwanted and unexpectedly. <laughs> but I marched right up to him and made him make me a drink. And then I exited stage right. Act two. <laughs> Mark is an actual big deal. I fell into major crush mode when I saw Mark, another improviser at a storytelling show sharing carefully curated intimate details about his life in front of an audience of about 70 people. Wow, he's so brave. <laughs> okay, I flirted with Mark for like weeks until finally he asked me out. Eek! He picked me up in his yellow smart car <laughs> and brought me to a house party full of improvisers. Okay, I thought they were the coolest people ever. <laughs> people who were the leads in their own plays. They were so brave and confident. Okay, but funny enough, I don't actually remember clicking with anyone at the party or even having a great conversation with Mark that night, but I was so enamored. And when he drove me home, we made out in his car. A dumb thing to do in a very smart car. <laughs> Thank you. A couple weeks later, we were on our third date, having a beer at a candlelit bar in the Mission. I was head over heels for him. And just as I thought, he was going to ask me out, ask me to be his girlfriend. He ended things with me. Mm. I know, for another woman. <laughs> he was seeing both of us at the same time and chose her. He double cast the play, and I didn't even know it. <laughs> Listen, it turns out a year later, they got married, okay? But that night, he ended it with me. I was pretty upset. I had high hopes to get the lead in that play. A week later, I dragged myself into Piano Fight to watch my best friend sit on stage for a panel during some show that was about wizards. And at one point, I walk into the bathroom, and I look up, and I see the words, Mark's Bathroom proudly displayed in fancy font on the back of the door. Feel free to go check out the bathrooms after this. He had put money down to have his name on a door in an effort to support Piano Fight. That's nice. Um, most theaters you can buy a seat at the theater and in this one you can buy a porcelain one. It was a very nice thing he did for the bar but I felt pretty crappy. And I exited stage left. <laughs> Act three. <laughs> Chris, the truly big deal in my life. The first time I met Chris was at Piano Fight, right outside. You'll be happy to learn that Chris was not an improviser. <laughs> Yay! He was, however, a stand-up comedian. Uh. The night we met, <laughs> the night we met, Chris drove my friends and I to the East Bay and I ended up sleeping all the way home in the back seat, feeling exhausted from another night at Piano Fight. He dropped me off first, asking my friends, what's up with Molly and can I have her number? It was a real sleeping beauty, love at first sight for him kind of situation. <clears throat> Chris and I went out and we just clicked. Chris made me laugh, he listened to me, he thought I was hilarious, because I am. <laughs> and he didn't pants me once. Yay! We ended up falling in love with each other and he was my person for three years. I loved that he was pursuing stand-up comedy because telling your story on stage with the intention of having people laugh isn't just impressive, it's scary and vulnerable. I was under the impressions though, I was under the impression though that comedians were the happiest people and Chris wasn't really that happy. There's nothing sadder than a sad comedian. 
And that made me really unhappy. I was more invested in his dreams than he was. Our love didn't last, and it really hurt. About nine months after our relationship ended and I was starting to feel better, I found myself, of all places, rehearsing a sketch comedy show at Piano Fight. <laughs> that very same night, Chris and my mutual friends got engaged here, downstairs. And all I wanted to do was celebrate their love. Chris, of course, came to do the same, but with his new girlfriend, who I got to meet while my heart was basically pounding out of my chest. I played it very cool and cordial and also quickly ran to the bar for a drink and enjoyed the night as best I could. And I exited the stage through the back of the house. I'd love to say that I learned my lesson and stopped dating performers after this, <laughs> but that's not the case. What I did learn, however, is that I don't wanna be, I don't wanna date a performer, I wanna be one. I wanna be the leading lady not the best friend or somebody's girlfriend. Piano Fight wasn't just a place where Joe was the bartender, Mark had his bathroom, and Chris had his new lady, but rather it was the place that I realized how I wanna show up in my life. Piano Fight wasn't always the place I loved going to, but I wouldn't really be here without it. We're friends now, we're cool. <laughs> Tonight is the first night I've ever read my own writing on stage. <laughs> it's scary, <laughs> it's vulnerable, but I'm feeling pretty cool. <laughs> Not like all those people I looked up to on stage, but like the best version of myself based on no one's actions but my own. If I saw me up here doing this, I'd hit on me after the show. <laughs> Feel free to do so. <laughs> Thank you, Piano Fight, for being there for every one of my attempts at love through the ages. Blackout, the end. Oh my God, Molly Shapiro, everybody!